So I have an intro that I now do for this, which I did as a joke, and I apparently now have to do every single time, so I, apo I apologize in advance. Okay. What's that I hear? Is it comment? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I did it. I did it. As a, I did it as a piss take, and now it's like I feel like I have to do it every time. Uh, but this is your first time, Carl, on the Calling All Commenters series. Uh, whether or not you're familiar with it, I don't know. But what we do is we, a few, yeah. yeah, we discuss things that are from the comment sections. So we ask a question or we go looking for comments. And this one is actually a crossover with my other series, which is Break Brad, which is where I just I complain about things that are petty. And I asked people in the comments of that video, of those videos, to tell me things that annoy them that they consider to be petty. Okay. And so I have a list of some of these here. We are going to discuss whether we think that their vitriol is justified. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start this list with one that you probably won't be able to contribute too much to, but it's something that comes up a lot and I wanted to mention it. Okay. People complain about the fact that my series is called Break Brad and not Breaking Brad. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, if people don't know, is that at one point it was called Breaking Brad. Um, I changed it back to Break Brad because Breaking Brad is already a thing on loads of other people's YouTube channels. Uh, whereas Break Brad, Brad yeah. isn't. Because obviously Breaking Bad is a well-known phrase. Break Bad means the same thing, but it's not the name of a popular TV show. Yeah. So stop telling me to change it. I'm not changing it. The first one we're going to discuss... Is this justified to be annoyed at or not? Okay. When people play music out loud on buses or trains. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. No, uh, no doubt British. in my mind either. Yeah. We are British. It's not even something that's like worth mine or getting annoyed about. It is... There's, there's a social contract when you're out in public, and there's a few things that are expected of you. Because I know there's always people like libertarians and all that. Like, there's no expectation. No, there is. There's a few expectations placed upon you in public, one of which is like the right to just be left the fuck alone. And that right should be afforded by you and be afforded to you. And part of being left the fuck alone is like also includes like not having your sound, like the sounds you're making interrupt other people. Like have a conversation, listen to music, play on your phone, read a book, sit on a chair. Yeah. But the instant that impedes someone else's enjoyment of those same things, you're being an asshole. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I had an incident recently when I was traveling back home to visit family on the train. And there were two women across from me who were in their late 40s, early 50s, around that age, playing music loudly out of their phones and singing along to it for over an hour of the journey. Yeah. And because of where they were sat and the volume they were doing this at, I couldn't ignore it. Should I have moved? Maybe. And that is a, um, you know, an especially big annoyance of mine because I, I travel on trains quite a bit. And there is, as with all things, some wiggle room here. It's like if you are on, like a seven o'clock train into a city like if you're going from like i don't know example like probably americans won't get like chesterfield to sheffield for example it's a small town to a reasonably large city yeah. about seven o'clock if you're having a couple of drinks and like laughing and joking that's to be expected or on if, a friday night or if you're in a completely empty train garage and you put some music on your phone for you and your friends but then if someone else comes in you should be polite and turn it down or off and it's that thing Common of um, whenever stuff like this comes up, it's like there is no hard or fast rule. It's it's just like that quote about pornography. Of I don't know how to define it, but I'll know it when I see it. Of like I don't know exactly at what point this behaviour makes you an asshole, but I'll know it when it happens. Yeah, we all we can all tell when it crosses that line. Yeah, so we're agreed that one's dick move. So I, I've actually tried to put these in order of them getting pettier and pettier. So as we go on, we're going to hit that point where you're like, maybe, maybe not. Okay. So the next one is when a cyclist rides on the pavement when there's clearly a bike lane nearby. I, I have a hard time getting annoyed at cyclists because they are trying. So I get way more annoyed at fucking cars <laughs> parked up. I think you say fucking cars on the pavement instead of the road. No, like cars parked like knobheads. Yeah. I get way more annoyed at that. It's like, and... It's a weird thing because we live in a city, but Sheffield's not the biggest city. So when you see bikes, it's not like the people with like the shorts on going like 85 miles an hour. It's generally just like a kid on a bike or like a delivery driver. And for the most part, it's like they're just doing the job or trying to get somewhere and there's plenty of space. Like Sheffield's a very walkable city. So, so I guess that my feelings would be a lot stronger if it was like, you know, like when I went to the Netherlands. Well, I come at this from a different angle because I've lived in Cambridge for two years. Mm -hmm. And Cambridge, there's about as many bikes as there are cars. Almost every single street or path has a bike lane and people will still cycle on the pedestrian roadsides. So I get this one. This one annoys me because especially if they're barreling towards you with no sort of consideration as to the fact that they take up most of this pavement and 
you feel like you're being a dick if you get in their way. Well, I've had that before, but I just don't move. <laughs> because I've just got headphones in and I don't care. I don't, I don't have like, the self-confidence to do that. I just don't give enough of a shit. It's like that thing of, like, I know I've got right... It's like when I cross the road, I know I've got right of way. I think people in this people are very polite in this country a lot of the time when it comes to letting people cross roads or letting cars to out. The ex- yeah, we're polite to a fault <laughs> where it's like, you know, a lot of people can take advantage of that, like, you know, with the cyclist thing. Like, no one's going to... It's like this thing playing music on, tra- like, on trains. Like, everyone is, for the most part, too polite to say anything. And all you need is that one person who doesn't have that social filter of this is a dick move or just that thing of like, I don't care. So you're saying, again, it depends. Uh, Okay, so this one's a bit more personal. Okay. Uh, So you approach a friend and try to show them a video or a meme that you think they would find funny and they just say, I've seen it and don't sit and enjoy it with you. See, I'm going to go say it's an arsehole move to do what that person's talking about because I fucking hate that. When people come and show you a meme or something... I, I've I've sent you stuff before. I've gone, Carl. No, you find you're my funny. friend. But I don't mean I don't like, mean I'm, a stranger. Yeah. I'm not talking about some random person in the pub. I uh, get so uncomfortable when people do that thing of, "Hey, this is really funny," and they put it on, and they do that, and they go, and then they watch you to study your reaction to make sure you're enjoying it enough. And it's like yeah. I don't like being put on edge. I don't like being put on the spot. And it's like the thing if, if you send me a thing and like you know people, I do it all the time with music videos and stuff. People say, like, oh, I'm listening to this song. Like, send me it, I'll listen to it. But if they, like, say, oh, I'm going to play it now, and then just sit there as I listen to the song, it's like, well, <laughs> music's a very personal thing. It's really hard to, like, you know, get into this song or listen to this thing or watch this video and enjoy it. If I know I'm having to, like, there's another person there responding, if you know what I mean? Yeah, it does put the pressure on you to like it because then the person next to you will be disappointed if you just suddenly don't. Or you might not be in the mood to listen to it, or you might not be in the mood to laugh at something. Exactly, yeah. Okay, different perspective there. I wasn't really thinking of it that way. And because it's in person as well. Like, if someone sends you, like, you know, a meme on your phone or in the group chat or whatever, it's like you look at it and you laugh. Or a video, you might check it out later. But when it's, like, they're right there, I'm going, hey, hey, guys. Guys, check this shit. And I think, as well, there's a, a rule of thumb here when you're, like, at a house party. And when you're at that point in a house party, it's like, I'll put some shit on YouTube while you're waiting for the takeaway. Hmm. And then I think there's there's a rule that again some people just ignore because they don't have that social filter. That the rule is the video cannot be longer than five minutes. Yes, yeah. And oh I've had those God. people like, "Oh, this video's so funny, twenty five minute long." And I'm like, "Oh God!" No. See, I, I used like a... to at the end of like parties or at the end of when um, I've been hanging out at a friend's house. I like the moment where you sit down and you start watching random shit. But I don't like it when one person takes over and that one person just puts their own things on repeatedly and you can't contribute anything. Or they put on, like, you know, a longer video from a content creator that they really like. And I'm going yeah. to include Fact Fiend in this. Because I have heard from people that I've met and talked to that they've been at house parties where people put on Fact Fiend. Oh, this guy's really funny. And other people are like, I don't get it. So we're saying petty and unjustified. Hey, I'm being petty and unjustified here. I think my uh, <laughs> my pettiness is justified. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean this person who's saying, like, people shouldn't be allowed to not watch the thing I'm showing them. If any, I say I completely disagree with them. I yeah. am on the side of the person who's like, why are you showing me this? Yeah, so their complaint, their complaint then is petty. It's something that only I they think would so, be yeah. about. It. Yeah. Okay, I well. think it's a legitimate thing to be like, I don't want to watch this 10 minute long video as you stare over my shoulder. That's real awkward. This is somebody I know personally as well. So uh, is it? enjoy it. Just hearing. don't do that to me. It's fine. <laughs> okay, next up we have, um, if people experience a small mistake at a restaurant, but instead of saying something, they stay silent so they can complain about it later online. Oh, fuck those people! Fuck that. When oh, you, s- you see a review from a restaurant like, I found a hair in my food, it's like if you'd said that to the staff, they'd have given you new food. It's just the way things work. Yeah, I worked in a restaurant for years, and it's always the thing of like, I get to the end of the meal, was everything okay? Well, my food was a bit cold. Do you want a replacement? No, we've already eaten it now. It's too late. It's like, why didn't you tell me when the food came out? Well, I didn't want to bother you. It's like, it's not a bother, because now <laughs> you've got a bad impression of the restaurant. That, I, do you know what? They, people like that, they just like it. They just, <laughs> do you know what the people? They're just not happy unless they're fucking miserable. And I hate people like that. Uh, we used to have a rule when I was at the cinema, which is if they come out within 30 minutes and ask for a refund, they get one, because they clearly didn't enjoy it. If they come out at the end and ask for a refund, fuck off. You've watched the film. It doesn't matter if you did. It's the same thing in a restaurant. If you eat an entire meal and then ask for a refund, you've consumed the food. You obviously appreciated what you were eating, or at least liked it enough to consume it. So you've it, you've had the service. I, I just, like I said, there's just some people where something is broken inside their head, 
and they're not happy unless they're miserable. Like the only time they're ever happy is unless they've got something to complain about. <laughs> the irony that I've got a series where I complain about stuff. But that's what I mean. But like you do it in jest, you do it with your tongue and your cheek. Well, yeah, I, like I'm jumping off point for yeah. conversations, and obviously your complaints are you're not happy to have these complaints. You just like to air your grievances. I, I like. Well, I, I enjoy complaining about things that are completely pointless and unnecessary mm -hmm. because I find it funny that I find them annoying. Like, my best example of this is one from, uh, I used to do a podcast with uh, Adam and a friend Tom called That's Bollocks, and there was an episode of that where I complained that I don't like it when supermarkets have aisles that are an odd number, because when you walk up and down the aisles in the shop, you'll end up in the corner, and I like walking up and down the aisles and ending up at the exit. And I complained about this for like 15 minutes because it annoys me, and I know that it doesn't annoy anyone else, so that's what I mean when I say a petty annoyance, something that's completely inconsequential. So, but like doing that is just, it's such a dick move to be like, I'm going to save this. Like instead of getting, um, cause that, in that situation, you don't want the good food. You want the irritation. Like that you is want, your choice. Do you want to reserve the right to complain about it? Because it's, it's, there's a great tweet by birds rights activists on Twitter, which is, I am uncomfortable when things are not about me. And it's just that it's like, they're people who are fundamentally so uninteresting the only way they can steer conversation onto themselves is to just th their reaction to the world happening around them yeah, not something... their effect upon it yeah something needs to happen to them for them to be able to say something if the food yeah. got fixed it's not a story it's like uh, it's a phrase i've been using a lot is somebody with main character syndrome yeah that's another way of putting it yeah, yeah i uh, i used to be like this i used to have a um i used to complain a lot about things and everybody around me will be just be saying, well, just fix it like this or like that. And it's like, I wasn't fixing it, I was just complaining. And when I got to the point where I started to, like, try and fix things, it now really irritates me when I see other people doing the same thing. Because I know that the, everyone telling me that was right, and I was too stubborn to listen. And now the same thing is happening to that other person. I, I know a few people in my life who are like this, who prefer the misery. Uh, like, or, or they don't want to fix the misery, because it gives them something to talk about or it makes them like if they play the victim then it's not their fault and then they yeah. can complain about it yeah like a, a minor example of that for people maybe having a hard time visualizing it is like my mom love my mom she's great but i just remember as a kid up until like my teenage years where it'd always be oh man no one's done the pots no one's done the pots like you know washing up afterwards so then me and my brother start doing the washing up and then it'd be you've not done it right and then it'd be, you've not put it away right. And then we put it away right. And then all that stuff, it'd be like, she'd just sit there and go, oh, I've got nothing to do. I'm bored. <laughs> it's like, get a hobby. Get a hobby. <laughs> and now she does. And now she doesn't do that as much. <laughs> but it's just always the thing. It's like, get a fucking hobby. So uh, next up, we have, when someone interrupts what you're saying to ask you a question, what? which would have been answered if they hadn't interrupted you. Oh, I do that all the time. I'm terrible <laughs> for it. I am awful for doing that, and it's um, partly because of making these videos, which is like, dead air is poison for YouTube. Yeah. So just, and years and years and years of making YouTube videos, it's like, it's, it's seeped into my real life where I like cut people off to try and like, you know, get the conversation moving forward. So yeah, I'm guilty of this, and I know how annoying it can be. It's particularly difficult when you're recording like remotely as well. Like you and I now, there's multiple moments where we are going to talk over each other, and because there's a delay as to when the other person hears you, you don't know if like you don't know whether to stop or carry on um, and then there's just those awkward moments where both people stop and it's like who's gonna go back so if you ever see like these videos are usually edited quite heavily a lot of it's to remove pauses and interruptions and things the one that bugs me the most about this is when somebody will interrupt what you're saying to try and preemptively prove that they know what you're talking about i imagine this might happen a lot to you being somebody who studies a lot of uh, facts and things if you tell a story somebody will want you to know that they know what you're talking about because it's like a point of pride that they don't feel like inferior in this conversation so they will interrupt you with um what you're trying to say before you can say it yeah the internet reply guide phenomenon of uh, just wanting to let you know that i knew that and it's that thing about it's, it's especially frustrating when they'll say the thing like they'll interrupt you and they'll say like say we're talking about i don't know um a marvel comic or something like that and I'll say oh yeah that, I know that character they do this and he goes oh cool you got anything to contribute about that no what are we saying for that one what's our verdict incredibly annoying a completely valid complaint yes it is not a petty complaint at all it is completely valid if you do not feel heard in a conversation and someone is 
um, uh, like you know, barreling through and making it all about them, which I hope I don't do. I just get excited. Uh, when an advert is super unclear about what they're trying to sell. No, that's legit. I love that. <laughs> well, I think, I think it's, advert... it's an advertising technique, that, isn't it? Because they're trying to make you talk about the advert. But it, it does annoy me. I get really annoyed when there's like... It's really bad for things like perfume or things like cars. When the advert has nothing to do with the product. And at the end, they're like... Je veux je, whatever the perfume is. And you're like, why... I mean, it's because you can't advertise a smell, I guess. But... Yeah, and you know what it is? It's because they're not trying to advertise a sense. They're trying to advertise a lifestyle. They're trying to advertise a frame of mind. I still hate it. Yeah. It's frustrating, but it's marketing 101. And the best example of that has got to be forehead. Do you remember forehead? Forehead? It was the um, the forehead uh, stuff. You put it on your forehead. It was called forehead, and you rubbed it on your forehead. And the advert was someone saying, forehead, apply directly to the forehead forehead applied directly to the forehead and the advert never told you what it did and do you know why why it didn't do anything there was no scientific proof of what it did they just sold it and just like they hoped that you would infer that it stopped headaches because the adverts people going ah put forehead on head on apply directly to the forehead head on apply directly to the forehead head on apply directly to the forehead head on available at walgreens so they just inferred that it, it fixed headaches, but it was just wax that you rubbed on your head, and that was it. That, that's fascinating. Like, the idea that we're so used to adverts that people would just be like, this must mean something. Yeah, well, why would they sell a product that didn't do anything? And it's like it's one of those things where it's in marketing studies of, like, this is... They are literally selling nothing. Like, this yeah. is wax. It's like, this is the modern equivalent of snake oil. This is a product that does absolutely nothing but they're convincing people that it does and nothing they're doing is technically illegal because they never say that it does anything. They just show people applying it and then your brain makes the connection. I want want some some forehead now. Yeah. Forehead applied directly to the forehead. Got a nice big forehead for some forehead. Yeah. I think, go look at that advert. It's infuriating. But people got annoyed about it. People talked about it. And it was just wax that was centred. And, you know, placebo effect made people think it cured headaches. And there's still people to this day that swear by it that it does cure headaches. So are we saying, well, I mean, I'm saying I find it annoying, but I get it. That's my, that's yeah, my response. I understand why it's the case. It's not a frustrating thing for me. Well, I was going to ask you at the start, but I guess I, what I'll do is I'll leave it till the end now. But have a think while we're, do, while we're talking about everything else about the pettiest thing that annoys you. It I've needs to be. One. I've got a great one, yeah. You've already got something. I've got uh, a we'll, fantastic we'll hold it till the end. But, like, people didn't seem to understand what I meant when I said petty. So I wanted yeah, it to be just, something that nobody it's just else that would understand. Them, isn't it? Yes, it's something that nobody else would understand. Nobody gets why it annoys you, and it is completely unjustified. And Do you know what it is? Yeah, yeah. This is. It's like when you go on Ask Reddit, and you go on Ask Reddit, and they'll just say, "Hey, um, can you tell me, like, you know, an underrated video, Elden Ring?" <laughs> and it's just the same eight answers over and over again because people don't want to give an original answer. They want to give the answer that more most people will agree with. Uh, the next thing that annoys somebody, the fact that flammable and inflammable mean the same thing. Yeah, that's just more one of those quirks of language. It is annoying. It's though. like, it's like, what does bi-weekly mean? Oh, see, this is... No, so bi-weekly should mean twice, twice a, week. a week. Yeah. But, but it can but, also mean every other week. Yeah, but it should mean twice a week because it means twice Why a should week. Why should it? I'd, I think it means every other week, bi-weekly. But that'll be fortnightly. Okay, what about bi monthly? That's the thing, yeah. It's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's a quirk of the English. Like, like, there's so many words, there's bound to be some redundant ones. Yeah, but like, in, I think flamble and flamble, the reason why that one's so irritating is because if you put in, it often inverts, like, uh, yeah, the like definition possible, of the word. Yeah, possible, yeah. Yeah. So that, that one's just annoying. Like, the thing is, I can't think of many contexts where it would matter. Unless you were meant to label something as being not flammable and you wrote inflammable and people thought it was flammable, but that's not going to cause there, a problem. Wouldn't? Yeah. It's like, inert there's all the words that you can describe i think the scenarios where it would be important are probably ones that'd be really dangerous so i wouldn't want to be in them <laughs> uh quick one though. that is a yeah it's like that's just, i like language ones like the grocer's com um, the grocer's apostrophe i should say that's uh, one that a lot of people get pissed off about the next one is when a website imposes certain restrictions on passwords such as length uppercase lowercase numbers symbols this annoys me because every single one is different and I now have about eight passwords, and all of them have variations, variations with symbols and numbers. One, yeah. and... 
And do you know the guy who actually came up with that as well? Apologise for it. It's <laughs> damn because right you should have done. It's because, like, uh, if you go talk to any expert on this stuff, because I've done research, like, why do passwords have to have, like, you know, an uppercase letter and stuff? And it's there's no real reason for it, because all it does is make them more difficult to remember. Yeah. And they say most passwords, with the exception of, like, it's either, there's two ways passwords get hacked, and it's either in a leak, which you can do nothing about, doesn't matter how good your password is, and the second is sheer brute force. And that is just guessing every conceivable letter in a row. And the easiest way to avoid the first one is just have, you know, just a good password and password protection software if you can get it, or, you know, just making sure you only put your password on good websites and keeping passwords different. And the second one is just a longer password. The actual, like, length, uh, the actual, like, you know, difficulty of the password doesn't matter. Cause if your password is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that is just as difficult for a computer to guess as a long word that's as many letters long with all the different lowercase. Because it's just, it's the same amount of characters. So and it's, it's actually things, pointless yeah. just filling it with symbols. And that's why it pisses me off. Yeah, it's a valid thing to be pissed off about because it doesn't matter about having a special character and an uppercase number. It matters length. So realistically, and one of the things I heard is like, just think of a sentence. Just write an entire sentence. Yeah. Like, for a while, I think, like, my uh, Netflix password was, Dad, use this Netflix password. Somebody Just all in lowercase. And that was my Netflix password. And that was like, you know, no one's going to be able to guess that. But I never forgot it. I had one recently where I'd written out a password. And it was like, your password needs to be longer. So I just wrote the same password again. Mm-hmm. So it's just double password. Yeah. So that is a thing to be annoyed about. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. It's the digital equivalent of the TSA, where it's in, it's pure theatre, and it doesn't actually address the issue that needs to be resolved, which is... Because all that happens then is people with passwords like that, they just write them down, which is like, you know, the exact opposite thing you want. It weakens the thing. Yeah, I have a document on my computer that has hints. Oh, it's... It doesn't yeah. have the password, it's got hints. And the idea is that the hints are things that only I will understand, because they're things that either I've never told anybody, or the connection to them is so nebulous that I see the word and go, oh, that means that password. But anyone else sees the word and it means absolutely nothing to them. And that's how I've resorted to doing it because I have too many passwords and too many variations of passwords. We're getting towards the upper end now. So these are going to start getting like more and more petty. And I need to know, I need to know what you think. Let's go. So when a switch is left on, when there's nothing in the, like no plug in the socket. I don't give a shit. Right, I hate people like that. I remember, when, uh, is it in your own house? Fine. When people come to your house and they go, can you just turn that switch off? It's like, this is my house. It's like people who can't have what they can only have like their, is it the re- the volume in like oh, in the even five num- yeah, or yeah. even numbers? And they get annoyed that my TV's at the wrong volume. It's like, well, it's my fucking TV. I'll buy you to fuck off and let me watch TV. So I, I'll admit that I do this. I um, I don't like switches being on, even when there's something plugged in, if it's not being used. Mm-hmm. Um, But I, the reason that I do that is because I I think my mum mentioned once that like apparently if something's plugged in it can still use the tiniest bit of electricity. So my brain's just like even if that's true, I'm not going to try it. Yeah, or even I, I know. True. And like, for safety reasons, like you know, if you try one plugs in the wet hands and yeah. things, it is for safety reasons. But just it's that thing of, especially in the UK with like literally every electrical device being grounded by default. Like in America, I can see this being more of an issue. Yeah, where they don't ground their plugs for some reason which baffles me and is terrifying that their plugs aren't grounded by default and that they can just hang out of the wall if you nudge them slightly, they don't securely affix to the wall. Yeah, that always baffled me as well. I don't understand why the three-pronged one isn't this just the standard. because It's the best version, yeah. Because I said grounded by default. So the odds of you being electrocuted by it are very, very low. Whereas in America, which is probably where this myth, not myth, but this thinking comes from. Yeah. Well, like, you know plugging something in is actually like you know it is a coin flip whether you're not you're gonna die so uh you're saying petty you don't care yeah in my own home yeah if someone if you, if you do it in your own home that's fine if someone comes into your house and you're getting annoyed about it in someone else's house so <laughs> it's, like, it's not on you to judge the way other people live and if you are doing that there's other things you can probably judge them on them like leaving a light like if it's they're leaving their light on yeah if they're leaving a plug socket it's like no it's not doing anything Oh, it's still drawing phantom power. Like, unless it's a fucking PS5, <laughs> then it's all right. Uh, next up, the use of the word organic to mean chemical or pesticide-free, when the word organic just means to be made from living matter. I really don't like when people get pedantic about the definition of words, because organic, 
yeah, that might be its technical definition, but that technical definition is so divorced from what it means to the wider public. Yeah, I, I'm on the it's same page here. I, I don't yeah. care about words. Um, if somebody misuses a word or a phrase that is commonly being misused, then I will call them up on it. Like, in a previous video, I complained about Americans saying, I could care less, because I that one always irritated me. But when it comes to a word like organic, now just to means, in food context, to be pesticide or chemical free. So in my mind, like, I, it's not a problem for that word to have another meaning. Like, if, if, it, if it happened without it being a recognised thing, maybe. But now it's just part of the, uh, the branding, so... Yeah, and it's the beauty of language, that language is constantly evolving. So yeah. like, look at the word literally, where literally means both literally and figuratively. Well, now, it means now it's lit forcefully figurative, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, literally can mean the opposite of literally, in depending on the context, and yeah. that's great. Like, some people get annoyed about that, but I think that's amazing that language can evolve and change, and you can like actually track progress and cultural um, uh, changes and shifts and stuff through the use of language. So. Yeah, I hate when people get all like pedantic about words because yeah. even if you go to the dictionary, even the dictionary says like when you like they get queried on this stuff, we are not an authority on words, and they're the dictionary. So if the dictionary can't say that, you certainly can't say that. Well, slang is a great example of how quickly oh, words yeah. evolve. Like I, when I first heard people using the word "sick" to mean good, I found it irritating. Now I do it without thinking about it. Sick in it, yeah. Yeah. And that's the same with the uh, other way. The one that I always got confused by, though, and I wonder if anybody in the comments can let me know where this came from, is the use of the word bear to mean lots of. Oh, so, man. yeah, B A R E. Yeah. Or like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I'll never forget when a mate of mine's like, he was going out for an hour, going to get bear bitches in it. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's but, not the nicest way, but it's so. Even though what he said is really, really <laughs> offensive when, you know, written down. But just the way it said, that's like the beauty of language, that like the way the guy said it and then me knowing him, it's just that thing like, yeah, there are bitches in it. <laughs> it's the, the, but the reason, the reason why that one really annoys me though is because like with the word sick, I can understand. The word sick, um, like, oh, it's so good, I feel sick. Like, I get that. I get where the connection may have come from. I can't understand how a word that means there's nothing there or there isn't anything can suddenly mean there's lots of. And I, I want to know the, the steps that led there. Like, yeah, why? Yeah, that led, yeah. yeah. Is it a shortened version of something else? Is it, like, a particular brand or description or, like, a content creator or something? I want to know where it came from. So let Do me know. Do you know what the answer is? Probably. Is it some random it's... dickhead said it and everyone else started no, doing it? No, like, the answer most likely is a black person said it. So have you ever seen, like, that breakdown of, like, how much, like, slang and, like, popular culture... It's just white people taking stuff black people did and just being like, okay, we made this. Like, almost all fucking culture is just we took it from black people and never credited them. <laughs> like, all music, a lot of film, like, all language and slang and style and fashion all comes from that. And then white people are like, nah, nah, we made this. Just Elon Musk in it. <laughs> Oh, God. So like when I learned, like, the term woke, that was, like, used by black people in, like, the 1930s. I'm like, what? I was like, yeah, yeah. Then it going fell back into popularity with um, uh, like black folks online in the like, you know the Twitter sphere, and then just white people started using it, and now it's cringy, which is another one I think as well. Cringe is also like that. White people. So what you're saying is white people steal things and then ruin it. Oh yeah, you, who would believe it? But like, you know, in regards to language, my favourite one of them that's come around recently. That I like you with sick. I was like, I don't like that. But then it, it went all the way around. So like, I think it's hilarious. Is the the suffix aussie? Have you seen this? I uh, yeah, I, I'm aware. Where of you this. just add ussy to a word, and it's like as if the thing had a vagina. <laughs> and it's like as a friend of mine who uses it all the time, and it was like, oh man, why did John Williams have to go so hard on the Star Wars soundtrack? He put his entire Star Wars into that. <laughs> I'm just like that. That is why language was invented. Shakespeare himself would love this, and if people think I'm beat, no, Shakespeare. Here's a fun fact about Shakespeare. Just made up words. He just made them up. He's like, you just came up with a new word. And that's the thing. Like, if Shakespeare was alive today, he'd be like on the wussy train. He'd be on it. He'd be big on Twitter. He would be putting his entire Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare pussy into that. Shakespeare pussy. <laughs> he'd be on it. We're saying petty for Mr. Organic. He's definitely petty, yes. Especially that level of pedantic. Uh, so this next one is one that I agree with, but I'm wondering whether you do. Okay. Uh, when a snack brand starts to offer bite-sized servings, mm -hmm. 
And the reason why I think that this is particularly irritating is because uh, not only is it usually more expensive to get smaller packaging, uh, smaller um, items or smaller servings, but also the more packaging is used, which means it's, it's worse for the environment. Uh, and also, the um, there was a third point, but it is no longer in my mind. Is so it you that take over. Yeah. Well, I also find this quite frustrating. Is it yeah. that the companies use it? They use the guise of it being more for safe, for health and um, other reasons than just admitting. We just do you think we should just admit we it costs too much. We want to we want to make more money. Yeah, it's too expensive to make the full size ones. But they use they, they make the excuse of oh no, we're doing it for people's health so they can better um, portion control and enjoy our products in a, a, a healthy manner and help it's like no just say like we know you're a company your only existence or your only purpose is to create profit for your shareholders we know you don't give a shit we know you don't give a shit so stop pretending like you do it's insulting to us both it's it's always worse value for us as well like yeah. because they have to charge more and you get less rather than just like this is this is one thing that always irritates me when i go shopping so if i want to get say um say a pepsi pepsi mm -hmm. i want to get some pepsi um, if I buy cans of Pepsi, which is probably my preferred way to drink them, mm -hmm. you get eight cans, I think, for around about £4 or £3.50. Mm -hmm. But if you buy a two litre bottle, they're usually one fifty to £2. And it's much better in terms of like um, how much you get to buy the bottles. Mm -hmm. But I, not only do I prefer drinking from the cans, but they're also easier to recycle because yeah, plastics like are shit to recycle. And metal is infinitely recyclable, which makes you think, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's, it's, I just wish the companies had the balls to admit it. Just say, it makes us more money to do this. There's that quote from um, Jim Steph Sterling. It's like, companies don't want some of the money. They want all the money. Yeah. And it's like, even... It, so we've noticed this with the uh, energy companies in the UK. Yeah. It's like, they, they're boasting these massive, like, 500% uh, whatever gain profits... And they and... send you emails of like, what can we do to help <laughs> yeah. you with your energy but, bill? But then... It's like, well, stop charging me three times as much. When they're asked about it, they're always they're saying like, oh, the profits we made aren't from uh, people's energy bills going up. They're actually from other things. And it's like, well, couldn't you have then kept other people's bills lower, made a loss on that part, but made a profit overall so that people didn't fucking die over the winter? Well, it's no, because then a graph would have gone down. You don't understand, Brad. Like there was a graph, and the graph was like this, and your <laughs> like solution would have seen it going like this. It still would have been higher than it was here, but th this. Yeah, it's you like can't ignore this because that's the difference. It's they're not just making profit; they're making more profit, and that means that they're they're making more money than they made more money the year before. And like it's it's often brushed over because of the way it's phrased, but it's like our oh, profits are up five hundred percent. It's like, but the hundred percent that was there originally was still profit. You were still making 100% profit. It's the problem, yeah, that's with companies. Uh, they demand infinite growth. It's why every video game is a live service game, because no longer is it profitable. Or it's not prof it's not profitable enough for shareholders to make a video game, release it, make a couple million dollars. It's like, but we could make 10 times that if it was a live service game, and they ignore the reality of, but you can only make three of those a year. Consumers will only have three of those. Or sequels to movies of like, it's not profitable to make just one good movie anymore. It's more profitable to have an entire yeah. like you know, a trilogy planned out because then you can get actors for multiple movies. You save costs, but it's like they ignore reality of people only watch like eight movies a year, if that. It's just a uh, hubris from companies refusing to acknowledge the reality in which we live. So it's, it feels more insulting that they refuse to do that. So bite size snack, bite size snacks. Yeah, Shit. that's I right. yeah I I agree with the idea of like you know bite size snacks. It's offering the consumer the choice, but the fact they present it as their this noble act. It's like just say, just say it's cheaper to sell them like this. Right, we make well, more money when we sell these. So in spot number three, yes, people who enjoy sparkling water. I like sparkling water. What's wrong with that? That was it. That was all they put. People who enjoy sparkling water. Hmm. Is there a reason they don't like sparkling water? They never said. Uh, I will, however, weigh in on this because I don't like sparkling water. Do you not? No, nope, not just... I, I prefer normal water. I don't mind, like, obviously, fizzy drinks. Like, this is fizzy. I mm -hmm. just think sparkling water has a bitterness to it, and I don't like it. That's the thing I like bitter. I am a big fan of, like, the bitter flavour profile. I love coffee. I love, like, you know, um, dark chocolate. And, uh... I don't like coffee. I don't like uh, most beers and lagers. Yeah. 
And that's, I think, when it comes to this, the reason it, it frustrates me so much to hear stuff like that is because it's the, the extension of the mindset of, I personally do not like this thing, therefore I cannot fathom why anyone else would. Like, I am only able to view the world through my, my own lens of experience. So like, I don't like this, therefore I don't understand why anybody likes this. I've had this argument with people before where they're like, um, this thing is shit. And I'm like, no, no, you think it's shit. You just don't like it. Yeah, like, from the example I always use is, like, things like Jersey Shore and The Only Way is yeah. Essex. I think those shows are shite, and I don't understand why anyone watches them. But they're popular, which means they're watched by people, which means there's obviously a draw that I don't get. And, like, I've, I've had arguments with people about this kind of thing before, because they've been saying, this thing is shit, is objectively shit. And I'm like, well, it's not, because it's made millions and millions of dollars. So you're just incorrect. You don't like it. Maybe critically or in terms of like a certain people's judgment of what's good and what's bad, maybe it's not great. But clearly there's something about it that you and those people don't see. Yeah, and as well, there's, a, um, there's no ultimate um, measurement of success. Like success is measured differently and it's entirely subjective. Like something making millions of dollars, but not in a... Like Michael Bay movies are successful. Yeah. But if you ask some people, like, are they good? It's like, no, but... They're good in terms of one aspect. It's yeah, and when it, especially when it comes to water as well. Right? Are you aware of like speaking of like you know complaining about stuff? My absolute disdain for the subreddit Hydro Homies. I have never heard of this, but I'm, I'm okay. I can tell I need to strap in for a ride here. Okay, so one of my so a, a thing I often say is that I just can't stand people who don't have a personality. And like, um, I always refer to a mutual friend of ours when they were like um, on the dating scene. And I asked them, oh, so you've been on any dates recently? And they were like, it's not going well, Carl. Like, what do you mean? And it's like, well, and they said a scent, I will never forget it. Went, do you know when you meet a guy and you can tell that his personality is just three YouTube channels and a subreddit? And I went, I know exactly what you mean. He's like, just a guy and he has no original thoughts. Nothing he say is everything they say is either a quote or something else they heard someone they watch on the internet say repackaged as if it was their own thoughts and they never have any additional like critical insights of things they talk about and yeah. that extended to another friend of mine when I was talking to them and they gave me a I'm not sure if they coined the term or if they were just familiar with it, it was manufactured personality which is where people rather than develop a personality of their own through experiences and just being a person who enjoys life and seizes the gift of uh, opportunity when it arises they just buy something like that's my personality now in regards to hydro homies that is a subreddit where it's all about drinking water and it initially started off as just a way to encourage more people drink water drinking water's great water's good for you you know it improves your complexion you can't tell me right now we have hot lights on us i think people need one as well we don't look great because we don't wear makeup prior to videos. We have hot lights on us the entire time, which washes out. I'm going to be completely honest. I look better in videos than I do in real life because the lights I've got on me are so bright that they remove the massive bags I always have under my eyes. Oh, okay. Well, it's, I have like, you know, <laughs> either way, it's good for your complexion, it's good for your hair, just generally makes you feel better. But it being a subreddit, and it's like, like, with, like with tattoos or drinking gin or watching Friends or a TV show or disliking Star Wars... It's a very easy thing to go all in on because it requires no actual effort on your part. And as a result, people, as you know, like we've talked about, who just don't really have a strong personality of their own or don't have the confidence to be open with what they actually enjoy doing and do, latch onto this thing. Yeah. And it results in them just making drinking water their personality, which I think is the absolute just most basic thing you could possibly make your entire personality drinking water and one of the things that arises from that <laughs> subreddit when it makes it onto the main page of reddit is that they don't like people drinking sparkling water because that's not water i mean it's like but uh, it is it's, water it's just yeah it's the drinking equivalent do you, know, do you know what the pineapple on pizzas thing yeah yeah where like people like the internet just decided that pineapple on pizza sucks and you'll find people who are and I've encountered them in real life who are absolutely vehemently against the idea of pineapple on pizza just because they know it's a thing on the internet despite never having tried it. And yeah, that's what I think, like the sparkling water thing, that's what it reminded me of the hydro homies because like every now and again, it's like, you know, someone drinking like soda water or something. It's like They're not really drinking water. They're pretending. It's like, th this is it. This is the extent of what 
you're able to muster in terms of the personality is yelling at people drinking water. And the answer normally is, well, like, they're not even annoyed about that idea. They just know that if they say this, enough people will agree with them. Well, they'll get that, that, that jolt of endorphins of, like, people agree with me. The in-group that I've decided to ingratiate myself with will agree with me when I say this. I should say it. I can't believe that's a thing. Like, it's, like you said, it sounds like a parody of the people we're talking about. The idea that people would be like, I base my personality around drinking water and any variation on drinking water, like if it's flavoured water or if it's mm -hmm. sparkling water, is not the true water. Well, like, it, it, it sounds like you making an extreme of these kind of people. Yeah, it started as a joke, but there's, as with all things, like, you know, the prequel trilogies being, like, fun and good, like, prequel means, was a joke, and then there were people who didn't get that it was a joke, because they, they lacked the, like, you know, media literacy to see beyond the surface level, and just say, well, people are saying these movies are good, they're good, and then just, again, how many people have you met or interacted with online who their personality is just, like, you say hello there to them, and it's just, you see them go, mm. They can't help it. Because, you know. I mean, as soon as you said it to me, I hear it. I can hear it. Yeah, but you don't say it. I was tempted to. You were tempted to. And there are yeah. probably people out there who are probably really mad about this. Like, you just don't get it. I like, doing, I like doing the voice, though. There was a fapping video where I was. Yeah, I think you can actually it. do the voice as well. Like, you can do General Kenobi. Let's see, I can do General Grievous, and you can do um, uh, Obi Wan. Hello there. General... No, I can't do it. Damn it. <laughs> Gen... Oh, my throat's not... But I need to do a shot of Jack or something to get my throat in the right thing. Like, I'm putting that General over Kenobi. it. Right. Well, we're still talking about water in our number two choice. When people put too much water in the kettle than they need to, but then don't pour the rest out afterwards. Ah, oh, see. I don't like when people do this just because kettles are one of the most energy-intensive things in your home. Uh, I think the point of this is more to do with the the thing that I found petty about it is the fact that they get annoyed if the water isn't poured out. And their reasoning for this is they said if you leave water standing in a kettle, it can cause problems to the inside of the kettle. Unless you've got like one of those like nine hundred pound kettles, like kettles cost a tenner. Or unless you only use the kettle like once every two weeks. Yeah, and lime scale build up is something that takes years. And as you said, it requires the kettle to sit still. Yeah. If you're in any like reasonable British household, the kettle in my house gets boiled at least once a day. Yeah, and you know one of the best things to clean something? Boiling water. <laughs> I imagine that, that kettle is cleaning itself every single time you boil it. Okay, we're up to the final one. This one's interesting okay. because... Um, I just thought it was hilarious because they sent mm -hmm. me this in two parts. The first part is they said that what annoys them is when there's people who don't like dogs. They said if somebody doesn't like a dog... I can't trust them. And I was like, yes. fair enough, that's fair. Yeah, there's that great Bill Murray quote about that, isn't there? Of, um, I don't trust people who don't like dogs, but I trust dogs who don't like people. Yeah. But they followed this up by saying, I also don't like people who like dogs too much, because I also don't trust them. Uh, so I that... found this hilarious that there is a scale that they apparently hold where there is a correct amount that you should love a dog. And if you love it too little, you're a dick. And if you love it too much, you're a dick. Yeah, I will agree with that in a sense. Like, you know, I'll go back to the track complete Tinder thing. You know, people are like, I am a fur baby. Oh. Or, like, yeah, I've got a fur. It's like, yeah, it's good. Look after your dog. If you've got a pet, that is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to care for that animal, provide for it a good life and everything it needs. But also, it is a responsibility. It is an animal. And animals lack, like, you know, higher brain function and reasoning you have to, like, you know, draw boundaries. Like, people who treat their dogs like children but don't discipline them. And that's another one, like, it's, it, it's, it's not nice to do. It's not nice to, you know, be firm with your dog, but you need to do that for the safety of other people. Because the amount of fucking dogs that I've met that are not trained, and they jump up on people, and they go out, and they pull on their, like, um, I remember trying to walk a friend of mine's dog, and just like it pulled, it pulled the entire time. Like you go for the water, it's like, <gasps> it just it pulls. It's like it never got taught not to pull. It's like that's dangerous for the dog, for anyone walking it, for people around. It's like the thing we mentioned right at the very start, the social responsibility of like you own this animal, it's your responsibility to look after it, but also ensure that other people, their lives are not impeded by this dog if it's not well trained. Yeah. If it's not, uh, or if you like, you know, you um, uh, indulge it or do not train it or discipline it, it could be in danger to other people. 
but yeah, it's a, it's a different. Like you said, there's a sliding scale here. Of um, like, there are people like, you should absolutely treat a dog well, and like and I'm terrible for it. This is the photo we always use of me and my old dog. Like that thing was like I was besotted with that thing. I love that fucking dog. But I was under no illusion that that thing was like my baby. That I know that was a pet, and I treated it very well. And it, had the, and it was the best looked after dog. But when like you know, I was when people came round to the house, like I was the first person like you know get down sit. Because not everyone likes dogs. Like not everyone likes dogs as much as me. So I'm sensing sympathy for the person who said that uh, they think that there's a, a particular point. Like, they hate people who don't like dogs, and then they hate people who do like dogs too much. Yeah, I, I, it's, I, I agree with it to an extent, like, maybe not in the same way that they do, but just when people love dogs to the point... It's like, you know, people like the kids, and like, oh, I can never discipline my children. And then you meet you meet the kids and the little shits. Yeah. Because they've never been told no. And it's like, part of being a parent is enforcing boundaries, you know, for the safety of your child whether it's a dog child, a cat child, or a human child, and also for, like, you know, their potential interaction with the rest of society. So like, there is a social contract there of, like, you can't just raise a narcissistic little shit who thinks the world revolves around them, because it doesn't. So uh, this has run on for a long amount of time, and I imagine, <laughs> I, I imagine that there'll be an extended cut on the Patreon as well. Um, but what, what I want to do, Carl, is just quickly end... Uh, you yes. said you'd thought of something earlier that you would consider to be a, a very petty thing that annoys you. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot yes. what it was. Well, I, that's not very helpful, is it? <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I can like use the other, the backup one, which is people complaining about pineapple on pizza. Because I know you asked me that earlier, about whether I like it. So, yeah. to go down that eye, don't like when people say they don't like pineapple on pizza, not because they've tried it and don't like it, but because they've been told not to like it. And I am now just going to say, I... I've eaten pineapple on pizza, and I don't like it. But at the same time, I've eaten other pizzas and pineapple on. I did enjoy. Do you know why? This is just my little petty thing, and I think oh, the I, reason I'm why... aware of this. I've heard you preaching this yeah. before. The people who don't like pineapple on pizza have actually eaten it and don't just like it. Don't just dislike it because they've been told to, and it's the mean thing to do. It's because pineapple, when you serve it with a food stuff, is generally served with ham, because ham is very salty. And pineapple is quite sweet and it's like it's a balance between sweet and sour, but it's because there's bro uh, something in pineapple called bromelain which breaks down protein, and when you put that on ham, it breaks down the ham, and then the saltiness and the sweetness and the sourness of the pineapple juice results in like you no, know, it's very tender, tasty pork. Science lesson. That's that's how it works, yeah, and that's why you do that. Like the bromelain, in, it's why you also serve if it's not pineapple, apple, or, or because apple has it to a lesser extent. Yeah, you know, honey, yeah, just something sweet to cut through the saltiness of the. The pork. The problem is that when they put pineapple on pizza, they put pineapple with ham. And the ham, the saltiness of the ham, doesn't need the, the sharpness of the pineapple to cut through it because you already have that with the cheese. You have the fat of the cheese cutting through the saltiness of the ham. You don't need that extra flavour profile there. So it mixes. And some people do like it, but I think, like, from a, a just looking at the way flavour profiles work, it's an acquired taste to be diplomatic. However, I think if you put pineapple on a pizza that's spicy, that does work. And the pizza that I've had that I had pineapple that I really enjoyed was a like a volcano pizza that had like hot chili peppers, jalapenos, um, uh, and uh, not pepperoni, but it was, a bit, it was an entirely vegetarian pizza with all the spice on it and pineapple, and that was really good. Because then you have like the sweetness of the pineapple combined with the uh, the fatty of the cheese with the sh like the spice of the peppers, and that was good. Well, I implore anyone watching to uh, make themselves a spicy pizza with pineapple and Do let you us know. Just, just or, or, or order one. one. Yeah. Just me, every yeah. time I've talked about this, there's always at least one person who goes, actually, now I think that does sound really nice. Cause, and they'll say, like, oh, I, I, li I don't like spicy pizzas because they're too hot. And I say, well, that's why the pineapple comes in because the pineapple just cuts right through that. And it's like, you know, like kimchi with like <laughs> Korean food. Yeah. It's an instant palate cleanser. So you, you can just, you bite the thing, ooh, the spice, then you'll bite into the bit of the pineapple, the juice comes out, washes over your tongue, washes away the flavour, so you don't get that thing where you have something if you don't like hot food. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think people should try it, and they should let us know where, what their opinions are, whether Carl is right, or whether he is completely incorrect. And specifically as well, go to a pizzeria that really cooks your pizza, and you need deep dish, and you need, like, the um, the vegetables to be, like, in that cheese, because they're all bubbly. 
so they're like un- so they're all crispy on the bottom but then like burnt on the top while Joanna starts like char on the top and it's yeah. like oh that's, that's where it gets that's I, the I've, I've recently re-watched uh, Would I Lie to You like various clips of it and mm. I can't hear vegetables the same way now from vegetables that gre- <laughs> vegetables the clip with Greg Davis so every time you say it my, my brain's just going vegetables he went oh of course you must have vegetables <laughs> So I'd like to do another one of these. So I'm going to put the question back out there, but I want people to take note, right? I want petty. And yeah, I don't this... mind if you comment like two weeks down the line after this video. I want you to think about it. Things in your life that only would annoy you. I put out a lot of feelers trying to get answers for this. And one of the ones I remember I got, which um, I think is a good example, is somebody said uh, that they didn't like the sound of a ticking clock. And I'd said, well, oh, I fucking hate that. Well, but, but what I'd said is it's understandable because it's a recurring noise. It's sometimes too noticeable. I get that. But what I might not get is if somebody said, I don't like it when there's a clock that has a hand that ticks but doesn't make a noise. Because then I'm like, that's petty. I, I That's weird. Right. Let's uh, wrap this up. Uh, so, yeah, Carl, thank you for joining for calling all commenters slash Brad, uh, break Brad crossover. Yeah, calling all Brads. Calling all Breaking all commenters. <laughs> And um, hopefully, uh, if like if anyone obviously, uh, I, I don't tend to put the names with the comments because a lot with a lot of a lot of people ask the same thing. I also paraphrase. Um, but if you want to claim one of them and then maybe go into more detail about why it annoys you, then feel free. Um, but yeah, thank you, Carl, for joining. And see you all next time. Oh, hello there. No, don't worry, you're not interrupting. I'm just reading myself a lovely passage of this book written by our patrons, the ones who keep the channel alive and allow us to keep making shit like this. What was that? You'd like to hear an excerpt? Well, I do have with me an excerpt here via our VIPs. Would you like to hear it? Of course you would! Here it is just for you. <laughs> Patrick Bradson. Benjamin Fridman, Shay Pinter, Joe Noah, Sarah Paul, <gasps> Liam, Aero QC, Kynan Plays Games, Jet Road, Binga, Popsicle Tart, Rotoscope, Chenere, Andy Ellis, Joshua Knapp, Jace, Jacob Ursenbach. The Fez Wearer, Samuel Chesser, Anna Goo. <laughs> if you'd like your name to be one of these ridiculous end segments, you can do so by joining the VIP tier on Patreon. That's right, it keeps us afloat, you know. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs>